Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Sophia, your host. With me today is Ruxana Khan. She's an award-winning author of 12 books, one of which, The Big Red Lollipop, is included on the New York Public Library's list of 100 great children's books of the last 100 years. Ruxana shares with us her journey as a writer, beginning with the hilarious story of a Muslim boy who struggles to suppress his bodily urges while performing the early morning prayer. Ruxana, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Now, you were uh, listed on uh, the New York Public Library's 100 uh, Top Books for Children yeah. uh, over the last 100 years. You're the only female on that list, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, so congratulations no, on No, I'm the only Canadian female. Canadian female, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's other females So congratulations on for yeah. that honor. Alhamdulillah. Well Allah. deserved, in fact, thank because you. you've written 12 books so yes. far. Yes. So uh, how do you manage to bring uh, stories about Muslims, uh, Muslim children, in fact, uh, not just Muslims, um, to a mainstream audience? Oh, well, the, th the thing is, you try to make the story universal. I mean, at one point, I was, actually, I was actually complaining to my husband. I said, you know, they only expect me to write Muslim stories. They only expect me to write Muslim. It's kind of confining. He said, oh, what's the big deal? He said, just write a good story and stick a kuli in it. You know, that's <laughs> what he said. A kuli is like a brown person. Mm -hmm. You just stick a, uh, a Muslim in it. So what I try to do is I try to write the stories that are really good for anybody. And a great example of that, like for, uh, I, wrote, I wrote a collection of eight short stories in Muslim Child. And which is, yeah, that's yes. Muslim Child. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of uh, show what it's like to be Muslim from a kid's perspective. And the funny thing is with Muslim Child, the reviewers, they, they called it basically like a primer on Islam. And what I did was I covered all of the, the, the pillars of Islam, except for uh, belief, because belief is the first one, and it's kind of infused throughout the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, of the, the rest of the stories deal with the other major aspects of Islam. But I wanted to make it really engaging, because I grew up with some really boring stories. Like so in Muslim. <laughs> oh my gosh, they were awful. They were just <laughs> awful. We and can talk about that. Yeah, yes. oh, they were to terrible. So, and, and okay, w w at this point, I was, I, I, was, I was starting to write. When I had my first children and everything, I was starting to write and I write little songs and stories and stuff like that and <coughs> and at one point my husband he was on the masjid committee for the newsletter that went out into the community and they said to me they said Rukhsana you write why don't you do the women's page and I thought well, recipes and house cleaning tips no thank you I said give me the children's page I'll write some stories and one day I got an idea for a good story because we pray a lot you know we pray five times a day you know that and the first prayer of the day is the hardest it's always been hard for me to get up for Fudger. And in the summer, in Canada, the summer, uh, Fudger is like it's pretty four, yeah, 4 yes. o'clock in the morning, 4.30. You know, and you have to get still for a child. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I thought, what if I write a story about a kid who gets up to re for Fudger prayer, and he's kind of grumbling. He goes, oh, man, it would be easier not to be Muslim. And his sister hears him, and he goes, oh, I'm telling you, you don't want to be Muslim. And she goes, he goes, no, no, I just said it would be easier. Then I wouldn't have to get up and pray Fudger. And she says, well, don't you know that Allah, uh, you don't, Allah doesn't need you your prayer, you need your prayer. And he goes, yeah, yeah, fine, leave me alone. So he goes and he starts praying. He makes wudu. He washes his hand three times, face, mouth three times, nose three times, face three times, right arm to the elbow three times, left arm to the elbow three times, wets his hair, cleans his ears, washes his right foot to the ankle three times, and his left foot to the ankle three times. It's a hard task in the winter. Yeah, especially, <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, I always thought, well, why do we have to wash our feet? <laughs> anyway, so making wudu, he goes and makes wudu, and then he prays his sunnah, no problem in the middle of his fire, like the sun is the, the non-obligatory one, and the fire is the m obligatory one, in the middle of his fire, he's got a big problem. He's got to fart. But he doesn't <laughs> want to go back and make wudu again because it will break his prayer. He has to pray again. So he just squeezes and hopes nothing slips out. And he starts saying the words really fast. And then he goes down for rukun. It's harder to squeeze. He stands up. He goes down for sujood. He's on his hands and his knees, prostrating before God. His face is touching the floor. And he's swaying side to side, trying to contain himself. And then he sits up. He goes back down. He sits up. He's almost done. He's just got a few more words. And it happens. No more need to squeeze, no more need <laughs> to rush his prayer is ruined. But, his, uh, but it was so tiny, maybe it didn't count. So he goes ahead and he finishes his prayer like nothing happened. And his sister is looking at him like this. And he goes, what, what? And she goes, oh, you're so gross. I heard you. Go back and make what do again, pray again. And he goes, oh, man. So the story really is about <laughs> spiritual awakening. And the funny thing is, what happened was, I mean, this was way, way back, probably about 25 years ago. I, I, wrote the fir I first wrote this story. And the, the community feedback, it was in this little newsletter, the community feedback was 
amazing. So just among Muslims. Oh yeah, people. they loved it. They everybody can everybody knows. It was like telling the unspeakable. Nobody would say talk about this, but everybody knows what it feels like to try not to <laughs> fart when you're praying. <laughs> and and so I, uh, even the Imam of the Masjid, he came up to me. He said, "Oh, Raksala, that was such a good story. I just I know I know what just I know just what it feels like to try not to fart when I'm praying." <laughs> so everybody could relate to the story. So he was the one who told me, you know, you should get published. You should get. And I was trying. Like growing up, books were my survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. I loved books. I still do. So I thought it would be the coolest thing. So I sent the story out. I thought, this is a Muslim story. So I should send it to a Muslim publisher. And I sent it to a Muslim publisher in the UK. And they wrote back and they said, oh, sister, this is unrealistic. Even adults wouldn't go back and make wudu <laughs> again. You, you know, th this th doesn't work, you know. And I just thought, what kind of Muslims <laughs> are you? You wouldn't think that even adults would go back and make wudu and pray again? And I thought, okay, well, maybe what I could do is just make it a little bit harder for him. So he goes back to bed at first, and he tries to sleep, but he's got a guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's like tossing and turning. He starts thunking his foot. And then finally he hears the bird singing. And he thinks, oh, what is that noise? It's the birds. Ev and his father would say that every uh, the birds are praying Fajr in their own way. So he gets up. He thinks, okay, it's been an hour. He's been trying to sleep. And he thinks, forget it. I won't be able to sleep. I might as well go and pray Fajr again. So he goes and he makes a fresh wudu. And this time he says the words like he really means them. And, and when he's done, instead of going right back to bed, he starts doing his dhikr, his remembrance of God. SubhanAllah, God is, gr you know, glory be to God. And then Allahu Akbar and everything. And so he's doing that, counting them off. It's kind of like a rosary. And he looks out and he sees the sun starting to rise. The sky is all pink and rosy. The grass is sparkling with dew. It looks really pretty. So he grabs a book and he grabs a blanket and he goes out onto the porch to watch the sun rise. And that's where his father finds him. Two hours later, he's fast asleep with the Quran, which is our holy book, in his hands. Now, I tell this story all over the world, okay? Like, I've been all over Canada. Mm -hmm. Muslim audience, it's not Muslim. Doesn't matter. Everybody knows what it feels like to try to suppress a fart, okay? <laughs> Everybody knows what that feels like. And the kids, they, they get so much out of this story. It's a hilarious story. So, so that story, I, in, instead of sending it to a Muslim publisher, because I thought, I want to write stories that, because I was seeing so many Muslim kids embarrassed about being Muslim. I mean, when you grow up with the media image that Muslims have, I mean, why wouldn't you be embarrassed about being Muslim? And you came to Canada at the age of oh three yeah. from Pakistan, mm -hmm. so you have experience. Oh, I mean, definitely. there weren't many Muslims at the time. No, not, um, not, not many at all. And growing up in Canada was brutal. It yeah. was like, the racism was like in your face. You said you faced bullying as well, Oh, right? definitely. The, in fact, the bullying um, really turned me more towards the books. Mm -hmm. The books really were my coping mechanism. And without books, I probably wouldn't have continued. I, w I probably would have given up. I might even have committed suicide. I mean, there were times when wow. I thought about it. It, it was, was that, that serious. bad. It mm -hmm. was that bad. So you turned to, to reading books? Well, two writing? things. I turned to my faith. Mm -hmm. I turned to Islam. I mean, and, and I mean, when I was in grade seven and eight, there were, I had absolutely no friends and only enemies in this school. And there were many times during the recess, especially, where I would just sit under the trees and I would just think and I would contemplate and I would talk to, I would talk to Allah, I would talk to God and I would ask myself, okay, do I really believe? And it was kind of a, a situation where I turned to my faith and I turned to books. So those were the two things that kept me going. And I think that, you know, I think God saved me because really the stuff that I went through, I could easily have succumbed. I could, I could easily have gone to drugs or whatever. So many ki things that the kids are going, turning to for coping. Instead, I went <laughs> to books, which is actually a very positive yes. kind of way yeah, <laughs> of dealing with it. And they say that if you want to be an author, have a really terrible childhood. Yeah. So in you that, in that, yeah, in that <laughs> regard, yeah, I really qualified. Yeah. And so with Muslim Child, what I was trying to do, I was trying to have these, these stories that are entertaining that are about being Muslim. So they're, they're all humorous then? Not all of them, no. Okay. My favorite story is that in there is actually a sad one. Okay. It's called Samosas, and it's about like an orphan in an orphanage in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we put the stories all over the world to show that Muslims are all over the world. And the first, uh, the poem that starts it, it's called Muslim Child, and it's Muslim Child, Child of Peace, Child of War. 
uh, what do your black eyes see? That's how it kind of starts like that. So it really shows that Muslims are part of humanity and they're all, we're each a piece of the puzzle of the mosaic of society. And I wanted to show, and at the end it says, I'll try to understand you if you try to understand me. So the whole story, the whole book is about understanding and it's actually been called a primer on Islam. You know, because people can, can read Muslim Child and they can actually uh, get an idea of what the whole religion is all about. And in fact, I have a hilarious anecdote. This um, librarian from New York, she, I was standing in line at the ALA when it was in Toronto, and she, um, she, she bought a copy of Muslim Child and took it back. And during Ramadan, she had these Muslim kids coming to the library and she would deal with them while they were fasting mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And there was one kid, she wrote, she wrote about it. One kid, he was, uh, I think, from Afghanistan, a little troublesome little guy. <laughs> and he, he kept looking at Muslim child, kept looking at it. And she said, do you want to take it out? And he goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he took it out, he took it home. And after three weeks, she said, okay, you need to return it now. And he said, um, can I buy it? <laughs> and she said, no, this is the library, you have to return it. So then he kept kind of dilly-dallying, dilly-dilly-dallying. And then finally, this little boy, he won a, 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 he won a competition in the school. And in the, it was some, he won a book. And it was a book about space. So he came up to the library with the space book. He said, can I switch it for this one? <laughs> and she just thought it was so cute that he loved this book so much. That that she said she said okay and she said it's I'll not just, just buy cute, another but it, one. It's touching, you know. The yeah, fact well, that this yeah. book, you know, he could see people within the book that kind of look might have looked like him or might have talked like oh, him. Oh, absolutely. You know? And I think especially it's within so important for Muslims. Oh, very, very. To see it's it's a it's a form of validation mm -hmm. where they see themselves in a story and it's a funny story. Everybody can laugh. Anybody, everybody can enjoy, and yet it's about Muslims. So that's one one of the things I tried to do with this. I tried to write stories that. Are, that are entertaining, but yeah, they're about Muslims. Now, Ruxana, you've written 12 books, uh, an amazing feat. Um, so how have been they been received? Oh, alhamdulillah, they've been doing really well. Uh, it's, it's not easy. Like, I do find sometimes I feel like uh, the hijab and the way I dress has closed some doors, but you know what? It's actually opened others. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who are interested and curious, and they want to be inclusive, especially within the education of, uh, educational establishment. They understand the need to validate the reality of all of the students in their, their schools. And as a result, there's a, like a natural um, market there for my books, and it's been really good. Rosanna Khan, thank you so much for being on that show. We really appreciate it. Oh, we my hope pleasure. to see more of your writings. Inshallah.